Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how to restore files or folders from Hyper Backup. So I decided to make this as its own video because this will technically work for any backup destination. Meaning that if you're using Backblaze or using Google Drive or an external hard drive, whatever you're using, you'll be able to follow this process and restore your data. So one of the main reasons why I personally like Hyper Backup is because you're able to restore files or folders individually. So what that means is that if you go through and you accidentally delete a specific file, you can go in and you can restore that one file only or you can download that file and we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, it also gives you the option of actually restoring an entire folder. So if for some reason you go through and you lose your folder, you're able to actually restore the entire folder by a click of a button. That's a huge benefit. So we're quickly going to look at the two different ways that you can restore files or folders. So if you want to restore an individual file, you have to open up the Backup Explorer. The Backup Explorer will have every version of that file from the backups that it has. So if you configured that backup job to have 30 versions, say, the Backup Explorer will allow you to go back and restore files from 30 versions ago. You also have the option of going through and restoring the individual file to your existing folder, or you can actually download the file and do whatever you have to do with it. In a nutshell, this is pretty much all that Backup Explorer does, but if you think about it, that's all you need it to do. You need to be able to go through your different versions of your different files, and you need to be able to restore them or download them if necessary. So now we're gonna look at how to restore an entire folder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna delete all of the data that exists in this uh, test folder that I created. There's six files here, I'm just gonna delete them all. So let's imagine that you go through and you wake up one morning and all your data is gone, whether it's corruption or uh, you got hit by a bit locker, whatever it is, we'll assume that your data is gone. Let's assume that we now have to restore that data. So the easiest way to restore that data would not be to restore the files individually. You have to try and restore those folders in bulk because it's gonna be a lot easier to restore the entire folder than each file. So what you can do is you can start a new restore task and basically you just have to click the restore data button and then it's gonna go through and ask you where you need to restore from. So for me, I'm using the Google Drive task that I created. And I'm going to restore from that, and then it's going to go through and ask you if you need to restore any system configurations. You might be backing up system configurations in the event that you have a, a major issue on your NAS. You might have to restore everything, so you might want to restore system configurations. But for me, I'm not going to be doing that. You then have to select the folder that you want to restore. So if you have the folder and it currently exists on your NAS, you're going to have this little red uh, exclamation point here that's just informing you that the folder already exists. So if you go through and you restore that folder, it will overwrite the entire folder, no matter what is in it, with that data. For a lot of people, this is exactly what you want, but just know that if you have data and you're only trying to restore some of it, then you probably wanna go through and restore the files individually. After that, click apply, and you're gonna see that your data restoration begins. At this point, give it some time. It totally depends on the size of the folder. But when you go back into that folder, you're going to see that all your data exists. And that's because we restored it from a backup. So those are the two ways that you can restore data from Hyper Backup. You can do that for any provider. So you don't have to worry about using Google Drive like I'm using here. If you're using Backblaze or you're using anything else, you'll still be able to follow this process. And one thing that I want to note that's really not part of this, but that worries a lot of people is... They say that if they use Hyper Backup that they need a NAS to restore their data. That is not true. Synology offers a Synology Hyper Backup Explorer. It exists on their website, and you can actually download a Windows, Mac, or Ubuntu uh, application that will allow you to navigate to the Hyper Backup file and restore data from that file. So if for whatever reason you're going through and you're saying that I don't want to use Hyper Backup because I need a NAS to restore it, know that you can use this tool to restore your data if necessary. So that wraps up the video for today. Pretty straightforward because you can use it for any backup destination. So configuring a backup destination generally requires its own video because they differ somewhat based on how you have to configure the actual tool like Backblaze or Google Drive, etc. But this process will work for everything. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks, guys.